So next up, um, I want to talk about uh, reujinks. Now, for those of y'all that remember, I did a video last year about a Nintendo Switch emulator called Yuzu, right? And Yuzu was between Yuzu and Ryujinx, arguably Yuzu was the better Nintendo Switch emulator, if you ask people. Um, it ran games very well. It did, you know, really good. They had a, a good team of developers um, that was working on it. It was under the Tropical Haze LLC uh, company. And, you know, that they were doing, you know, things with it. You know, I, I, don't, I don't exactly know what their intentions was, but, you know, they were doing pretty good with it from what I'm going to understand. And um, the, the thing that kind of got them caught up, because Nintendo, as a company, Nintendo has always been, I don't know if I should say overprotective of, or just overzealous with the protection of their IPs or anything like that. Um but Nintendo has 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 a very strong history, a very uh, heavy history with going after people who either made a Pokemon fan game like back in like the early 2000s or late 90s or whatever like that. Um, whether they made anything like they're still trying to find ways to sue Pal World. And then there's another kind of like another Pal World type of game coming out soon. So Nintendo's going to have their hand their hands full with that, and then you know Nintendo is like when when they see something that imitates what they're doing, instead of taking it as homage, they take it as disrespect, and they try to go straight for the juggler. So with with the issue with Yuzu last year is that uh, there was a video game called The Legends of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. It came out, I believe, in March. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. It came out in March. But I think a week before the official release day, somebody sold the game early or got an early copy of the game. And, you know, they put it online for people to download or whatever like that. And some of the developers from Yuzu actually ended up getting the game and they used it to try to, like, you know, work in the emulator now yuzu had a again like from what i'm understanding yuzu had kind of like a monthly log or like blog where they would talk about the the updates that they made to the uh, or the improvements that they made to the yuzu emulator and they would you know talk about you know the changes that they made and the games that they got to work on it and i believe I don't, I, can, I don't know if it was at the end of April or the beginning of May of 2023. Um, Yuzu ended up doing a an an update improvement vlog on on the on the Yuzu emulator, and um, they spoke about how they got they pretty much got like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom to work on it. You know, they fixed like some lighting because I read the vlog, like they fixed some lighting issues, some, some fog issues in the game. And, you know, somebody from Nintendo seen that and they were able to backdate it to the er that early week ahead of schedule. And that's how Yuzu ended up getting in trouble. Um, you know, cause Nintendo has always been trying to find some way to legally go after Yuzu, but the main thing that they were trying to use against them was they were trying to find a direct line of piracy. Now, the emulators themselves, they aren't illegal, right? The, because it's just a program that people made on the computer. It, you know, what, what makes it illegal is what you use it for. Because Sony, back in like the 90s, they um, sued a company called they sued a company that made an emulator called the virtual game station. And that was like a multi platform, um, emulator. I think it ran like the Sega Genesis, super Nintendo emulators up at that time. Um, and, a, and of course an emulator that Sony was actually going after them for was the, the, uh, original PlayStation. Somebody made an emulator of the original PlayStation and that was in the virtual game station. So, 
at the time, you know, the judge said that the judge that they went to said that the emulator doesn't um, monopolize on their rights. I don't remember the exact words, but basically Sony isn't losing any money from this emulator being in the, you know, from this emulator existing. So, of course, Sony, they stopped trying to go after people in a uh, fast forward, you know, even to today, Sony. um they actually hired some people that made the PS2 emulator to help them with their like their with uh other games that they have in the future uh to work on the PS5. Like they hired two of the lead developers. I think the PS2 emulator was called like the PCSX2. And Sony actually hired two of their lead developers to come work for them. You know, so because the way Sony seen it, they were solving problems that they didn't have to invest like hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars for you know i think they're trying to work that they're working on like some type of backwards compatibility issues things like that so it's crazy that sony is, was the first entertainment company to sue an emulation company and they hiring and working with the emu, with the emulator developers and nintendo was going after them but to get back on subject you know yuzu basically got caught you know they got caught trying to pirate the game and that gave Nintendo legal rights to go after them. And they did, they shut them down. I think, um, at the time, I think they were getting like Yuzu. Um, they had a Patreon where they were making like $30,000 a month. And, um, I guess the developers were getting paid off of that. Uh, and Nintendo, when they shut them down, they basically did a one-off, uh, a, a one-time payment to Nintendo the uh excuse me the uh, tropical haze llc they did a one-time payment uh for i guess damages or whatever of like 3.5 million they paid that off and you know they just been off the emulation scene ever since but ryujinx was the other emulator that for the most part was foolproof because one th there was no direct line of piracy being used with the ryujinx emulator the developers never endorsed it or tried to get like early copies of the game or anything of that uh, anything of that sort so therefore it was immune to nintendo's legal actions you know like trying to get sued or anything like that but a few days ago it was uh posted i believe it was the 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 head of uh the ryujinx emulator as you see right here let me expand it um you see right here it was on reddit that the that the that the head developer J excuse me G D K Chan uh he was contacted by Nintendo and offered an agreement to stop working on the project, remove the organization and all related assets he's control of assets he's in control of while awaiting confirmation on whether or not whether he would take this agreement, the organization has been removed. So I think it's safe to say what the outcome is rather than leave you with the only panic. In speculation, I decided to write this short message to give some closure. These words are my own. I don't want to speak for anyone else here, so just remember that while reading. Thank you to everyone who has contributed code, documentation, or issues, or issue reports to the project. Thank you all for following for, for following us throughout the development. I was able to learn a lot of really neat things about games that I love, enjoy them with renewed qualities and in unique circumstances, and I'm sure that I'm sure you all have experiences that are similarly special. I'm extending my own massive thanks to our moderation team who have been through some circumstances, who have been through some rough circumstances and always found a way to make light of it. So that was uh, RIP and Perry Perry uh, speaking for uh, um, GDK Chan. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that was um that was that. So let me say it like this. As I stated before, Nintendo had no legal um reasons to go after Ryujinx, right? Because they didn't do what Yuzu did and they didn't pirate anything or to, there was no direct line of piracy for the Ryujinx emulator or anything of that nature. So when um, 
Yuzu got shut down, Ryujinx was fine. You know, they were completely fine. And technically, they still are. Um, Because we don't know what the ins and outs are. I don't think there was a, uh, a guy that, you know, uh, I don't think that GDK Chan uh, removed it um, because he just agrees with it because he, he hasn't made a statement yet. I think he just took it down for the time being so that way, you know, nothing else happens. Um, so I don't know. We'll see what happens in the future. Hey, what's going on? Um, like, we'll see what happens in the future. But. As of right now, you can't get the U, the Ryu Jinx emulator, at least from the website. The website is still up. He just took down like the download uh, options. Like you can't download it from there. So, but you know, nothing is truly going off the internet forever. So I'm pretty sure it's some mirror website and the code has been, already been shared from what I'm understanding. Like you, you can't really get rid of it. Like for example, like when the Yuzu emulator got taken down off the internet like three more emulators popped up right behind it so <laughs> you know what I'm saying so so Nintendo has to play whack-a-mole all over again with like three different emulators that is based off of what Yuzu was doing and if Ryu Jinx is actually gone from the internet for good I'm pretty sure it's going to be like more emulators that pop up you know mimicking what Ryu Jinx did it's just you know you can't really get rid of any of this stuff you know I think what Nintendo has tried to do is that as far as with Ryu Jinx, they tried to intimidate them because like I said, legally they didn't have any, they didn't have any legal grounds to sue them per se. It was more so like, again, when you read it, it says that it was an agreement to stop working on the project. You know, they didn't say they were going to sue them. They, it was nothing like that. They, they said he, it was an agreement, offered an agreement. Whatever that offer was, I, I, I can almost guarantee you it was more of like, it was more, it was less of an agreement and more so of an ultimatum. Like, if you don't do this, we'll go after you, even though we don't have legal reasons to go after you, we'll go after you and we'll, we'll get you so tied up in litigation that you won't have money or resources to do anything else. It was almost like a mob hit. Uh, kind of like a mafia threat you know what i'm saying like so that's what i believe happened but we'll see in the future if you know if gdk chan decides to say anything um but as of right now this is the status of the real jinx emulator um I, I will tell people that you know if you're for emulation don't be sad this feeling for nintendo is not shared throughout the entire video game world you know, as I stated before, Sony actually works with the emulator developers and uh, and Microsoft, you know, they don't go after people that's emulating like older consoles and things like that, because those companies, they're, they're not as overzealous as Nintendo is. Nintendo is so protective, uh, so overly protective that, you know, it, it could be seen as like, you know, disheartening at times, you know, because when you have fans that, you know, have been that have been playing your games for like since they were kids and they got old enough to try to make a, a, a fan version of that, a fan version of what you did. Um, they find things that they don't like about the original game and they try to improve on it with a fan game. And instead of taking that inspiration and making your games better, you go after them, you know, so it's kind of disheartening. So, We'll see what happens in the future, like I said, with Ryu Jinx, um, if we hear anything. Uh, but as of right now, it is unavailable to download anywhere. And, uh, you know, um, as far as Nintendo goes, you know, because I heard they're even going after people that's making YouTube videos on how to get like the, the like the Super Nintendo emulators running and things like that. And when, when it gets to that point, it's like, Nintendo, they're kind of going crazy because how old is the Super Nintendo? How long has it been, before, you know, before they stopped mass producing Super Nintendo consoles and Nintendo 64 console? You know what I'm saying? It's like they just literally just going after anybody at this point. And I, I think part of that reason in my speculation is because they couldn't sue Power World and they trying to like, you know what I'm saying, get their get back. I would not be surprised if Nintendo had like a war room 
at Nintendo's headquarters. Like they just had a war room and they're just trying to strategize how they can intimidate people from even remotely, you know what I'm saying? Trying to do like a fan game or whatever, you know, if, if, if them going after power world was a fail, then they're going to go after somebody else. Cause in the eyes of the public, the, the video game developers of Power World or other other people who Nintendo couldn't go after, they ended up getting a win. So Nintendo didn't want that, so they went straight after the the other guy. So which was Ryujin. So and they just offered him like a mob style agreement. You know, either you stop doing this or you're gonna wake up with a horse's head in your bed next, the next day. So that's all that, it, that that's all it sounds like to me. You know, so. Again, once again, we'll see what happens with it. If, you know, this is really the end for Ryu Jinx, I'm pretty sure other emulators are going to pop up. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody's going to pick up the torch and run with it. You know what I'm saying? It's not... um, Like, somebody's going to pick up the, the torch and run with it. It's not going it's, to... It's not going to end well. Another factor, and, and I almost forgot this, the Switch 2 is coming out, right? So Nintendo going after Ryu Jinx, a piece of me is kind of wondering just how much of a change the Switch 2 is going to be from the original Switch. Because if the Switch 2 is using the exact same assets in um, hardware that the original Switch is using, technically they can make Switch the Switch a, like a current generation console, and that would make them able to go after Ryu Jinx or, you know what I'm saying, anybody doing doing that. But on the downside, if you're not actually giving us a new console with updated, you know, graphics cards and hardware and, you know what I'm saying, a new experience, because when the Switch came out, it was already like a generation or two behind. So we're hoping that the Switch 2 is like current gen. But knowing Nintendo's history with consoles it's not going to be that you know it's it, it's going to be slightly updated like um slightly updated switch so <laughs> i don't i don't know but but we'll see so that was my opinions on the reuging situation it, it's unfortunate we'll hear from gdk chan, chan whenever he decides to speak if he decides to speak if not, then I'm pretty sure other people are going to make other Switch emulators and decide to move on and work on them. And then Nintendo is going to be doing this nonsense all over again. So it's really a, a loss, loss for them. But I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, that's for you, James.